Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I'd like to welcome you all to the show. Uh, the up and coming docu film documentary, Everyday People. We're in negotiations now with distributions, and we'll inform you of which outlet will be uh, hosting and playing the docu film. Shout out to High Frequency Performance Gear, Eating Clothing Co., uh, our sponsors, uh, Hustle House Studios, STG uh, TV, uh, and so many more. The artists that perform, Low Key, Gino, Coon, Docs, uh, Lil Johnny, uh, Brother L, and, 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 and a host of others. Uh, we appreciate your time and, and effort and support. And we're going to dive in this thing right now. A little uh, sound for a minute. We're getting into a topic, which we'll, we'll continue later on today. And it's titled, uh, this, is, this, is, this is like a segue into uh, creating the myth. And why myth needs to be created. Uh, for our time to carry on uh, to a future generation and I'm talking about my I don't even have grandkids yet but my grandkids kids now let me rephrase that my grandchildren's children's children yeah they need to know where we're at today and uh, what happened so that certain parts of history won't be repeated again. Let's do it like that. Okay, let's set it up. First, you have a people on the planet that exist, but do not know that they exist. Now we'll bring it back. In the year 9,000, wait, okay, but before we get to the year 9,000, let me explain this to you all. Yeah, yeah, we'll go to the year 9,000. In the year 9,000, a new mindset entered into on our planet. Prior to the year nine, there was thinking or a way of life that was taught by the originators of the heavens and the earth that you have different names for. But he set forth, taught man, bred, breed life into man, and man was on its mission. Then when the year 9,000 came, and this is the teaching of the R.M. Elijah Muhammad, the year 9,006, when the year 9,000 came, a new man came upon the scene, which had a new mindset, or no, let me rephrase that, a new mindset was placed in a new man for a particular work, for a particular time, and a particular purpose. And... I'm not, uh, how can I say? I'm not blaming the shape or the vessel that the new mind was in. We're just dealing with this new mind because the new, because the shape and the vessel was only following the orders. Let's put it like that. So the new mind is on the scene. And that new mind was. Can we use the word suffocate? In a sense, the new mind was so suffocating that it almost wiped out the old man who carried the old mind. That new mind broke that old mind down to just a flickering spark. This is theology of time, the Army Elijah Muhammad. Broke him down to just a spark. That old man with the old mind 
went through hell, went through slavery, was decimated, and reduced down to just a zero. Lost all knowledge of himself. He was in a strange land amongst strange people. Meaning, he was in a strange position amongst a new mind because that old man and that old mind had suffered over the whole planet. So he was brought down to zero. Barely survived. Then one came after the 6,000 year time was up and unlocked one who was born that housed or clothed the ability to reach back and grab the old mind and also plot a course for the future. And so now you had a renewed or rejuvenated old mind that was trying to wake up a mind that had the spark of life but was uh, an amnesia uh, type mind was walking around aimlessly existing but didn't know that they existed and so the job and the task was to rekindle or wake up the old mind in order to bring forth the hidden knowledge and understanding in order to save the planet and humanity as a whole with instructions on how to be in order to avert something that the old mind had seen before the new mind was on the planet. The new mind had to tell the truth right down to the letter. But as you know, the truth hurts and when I say the new mind, I'm talking about the new rejuvenated, the old mind that was rejuvenated and renewed that was coming up on the scene with power that was rising that, that could equal to that new mind that was came on the scene in the year 9000 and surpass it as time moves or as uh, we evolve or as as the old renewed mind evolved in time so the old renewed mind out of Concern wanted the new mind to understand what it knew and wanted to extend the hand of friendship to say that I am telling you this to save you. But the 9,000 year new mind was blinded by ego and ignored the old renewed mind. Mm, mm, mm. 
And so, as the year 9,000, 360 degrees comes back around again, what was up, now is down. And what was down, now is up. With the same elements, atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons that existed in the beginning before time was charted. Before the four first motion, again, as the Army Lodge Mama teaches, before the first motion was set that started time, those same elements exist on the planet today. Now we're going into whether things are purposely done or done without knowledge of it, uh, without knowledge that it's being done. Now we're getting into, now we're putting, we putting human figures into old mind and new mind. So now you have uh, the indigenous people or the black man being taught by the European or the Caucasian man. They, they were in charge of the knowledge, or they were in charge of the knowledge that we have today. They taught you about Christianity, because you have to remember prior to the year 9,000, they were, they, were, they were the teachers from the year 9,000 to the present. They were your teachers. And those who say, this is just for the scholars, those who say 10,000 years, you have to go back and look at your calendar. But from the year prior, but after the year 9,000 to the present, uh, the Caucasian has been the teacher. Now, whether they purposely uh, misled facts, or could it be that since they were the new teachers, that they didn't understand what the old teachers left behind, so they used their best uh, ability to interpret. Interpret what the old teachers had uh, left behind. And that's possible. That's possible. Now, we'll start with uh, Jesus. Right, you had all the angels, and you had Jesus, and you even had Megan Kelly, and you had those who said that Jesus was white, that there was no image of pictures of of Jesus. Well, come to find out, Justinian of Rome had a coin, a uh, card. On one side of the coin was the picture of Justinian. And on the flip side of the coin was the picture of Jesus. The oldest picture that exists. And on that, the side where Jesus' coin was, they had Jesus with an afro. Looked like Ethiopian. On that, uh, the coin of Justinian. Now, once again, could the image that was painted by Michelangelo's nephew, I believe, could he just not known and painted the image of what you just saw around him because he wasn't widely traveled or or heard of this Jesus uh, figure and assumed that he would look like one of his own, meaning 
uh, Caucasian due to the fact that the Caucasian was were in, in rulership at that time after the year 9000. Then what about all the explorers and archaeologists even from uh, Christopher Columbus records where he gave a description of uh, uh, black people that he saw in his travels when he first was arriving to the lands before the mixture of the Spaniards with the indigenous. In all the accounts. Why is, why is this important, you may ask? It's important because to draw a parallel between one mindset and another mindset What's in the middle could only just be the fact that they didn't know one another. We could say that. Or we could say it was purposely done. But either way, uh, truth is truth, truth is truth, meaning that the evidence is there because the once, the black people who had the old mind that now are waking up are starting to do their own research, their own study, and starting to gather their own facts and finding out uh, all the things that were, uh, all the things that they were, or we were misinformed about. So that leads us to today in this question. Once you find out the truth, do you act on the truth and you try to figure out the importance or the important role that the truth can play in your personal life, meaning by the way you view and look at life based on the new revelations of truth? Or do you push the truth aside and continue to believe in what was a uh, 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 repetition in a sense meaning what was traditionally done it just was commonly done you might don't have uh, a reason why or what's behind it just the fact that it's been passed down from generation to generation so you don't want to mess up tradition. And you continue to uh, believe what has not been proven. Or believe what has been proven to be a false belief. But it gives you a sense of comfortability because you have uh, people, family members, uh, mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, fathers who believe this way as long as you can remember that was given to them by their former slave masters and it just became a hand-me-down a hand-me-down truth you know not the fact that it's been investigated and found out to be right and exact it's just a, 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 a story or a tradition or a way that just been was taught by a slave master and was handed down through generation has been passed on, passed on. It doesn't matter which way you go because you can keep passing it on, passing it on, but in time it'll lose its it'll fade away anyway because it was the foundation was a lie. So it can't continue on and on and on in time anyway because uh time the universe and the rotation of the earth is truth, so in time it'll get uh, swept out to sea, I guess you could say. So we're going to try to pick up later on in the day, uh, dealing with the topic, creating the myth. And we'll be on that note. Verbal Pick Radio. We're out. <laughs>